Thank you. Very welcome to another good session in Asher Escone. Before I start, please, guys, for Mikkel and guys from Food Cafe and Asher Escone, <laughs> these organizers. So let's just start. How many of you knows about these raincoats? Movie metrics, right? Metrics, metrics. Okay, cool. So I tried to combine metrics movie to our session today. I kind of use some part of uh, Matrix movie for my session. So let's begin. When you have your resources on Azure, it's so easy to manage maintenance updates. So you have everything in one place. You can manage it easily, you can use your resources, and you can enjoy. But what if you are using multi clouds like GSP, like AWS, or what if you have on-premise, like SQL servers, Kubernetes, if you have some servers. So how you can handle those? Basically, you have some problems here, like how you can manage it, how you can scale it, how you can uh, go through the security policies, or uh, it takes a lot of time to manage everything, and also it kind of costly because you need to have different applications, different resources to manage all of these uh, different environments. So what happened if you use this kind of different environment, multi-environments here? Your face like, is like Neo. So if you know Neo, he kind of my hero in Matrix movie. So when he realized that there is a problem, his face was like this. So before I continue my uh, scripts on this movie, on Matrix movie, let's talk a bit about me. So my name is Said Dahl, technical leader and senior solution architect at vSafe. And uh, I've been working on IT in, uh, in the IT industry for, OK, good, uh, in IT industry for 15 years. Uh, the past eight years, that I spent on uh, Microsoft solutions, especially on Azure. And my main area, expertise area, is on automation integration, hybrid cloud, and cloud adoption. So uh, if you want to follow me, uh, just scan this QR code. It's connected to my LinkedIn. And uh, I'm really happy if you give me some feedback about different sessions. So let's back to the story. You passed out by all of problem that you faced with your multi-environment. And in your dreams, or maybe in your real life, you find out someone trying to help you. And you need to get out from metrics. So you need to follow the rabbit, right? White rabbit. So the metrics that you have to pass, who will help you? It's Murphys, the other hero. So you have two options here. The first option is the red pill. You can stay in your world, struggling with different problems, complexity. You gonna miss out all of innovation that you are going to have, because yes, you have to manage different environment clouds and so on. But in the other hand, you have the blue pill, which helps you to go to outside of the, your metrics. So it basically gives you this option to have one management, one console to manage everything. So what I'm going to tell you today is about using this Azure service to manage multi-environment. And it doesn't matter if it's the other clouds or if it's on-premise. So let's go with blue pills, right? Cool. But before we go, in the Matrix movie, Neo took the red pill. But I love blue pill because it's about Azure. So let's go with this one. Now we are in the outside of the metrics. So we have Azure Arc. This is the all 
things that you can have in Azure Arc. So you can manage your different clouds. You can manage uh, on-premise based on different uh, resources, ba based on different services that you have in your on-premise. And basically, for monitoring, for management, you can actually use your resources in the other environment as a kind of resource inside Azure. So you can do the same, which is really great. So let's start with how Azure Arc does work. So this part that I'm going to explain, it's about only one small part of the Azure Arc. But please note that we have more complex scenarios. But I'm going to give you a small idea about how does it work. So imagine that you have a physical server, physical node in your on-premise environment or other uh, clouds. It will start by installing the agent. So you can export the agent from Azure Arc or Azure and install it on your server. And as soon as you install it, based on the connection and secure connection between the physical node and, let's say, agent to the Azure. But you have to note this part is really important, please. Attention. Because, because of the Azure Arc, uh, let's say, terminology, you are not going to open any port to your resources, which is really important. You just need to have outbound connection. And in some scenarios, if you want to ignore the outbound connections, you have another option too that I'm going to explain soon. So we installed the agent. The next step is outbound connection. So by this connection, all metadata from your, your server, your, let's say, resources the other, in the other environment, will go to the Azure based on those metadata. And as soon as you got this information in the Azure, your server become a kind of resource inside Azure. So when you have this server in your Azure environment, you have these options. For example, you can use cloud security. You can use log analytics policy. Also, you can uh, use monitoring services and so on. So basically, it's amazing. You can use your on-premise resources into Azure. So we have different type of, uh, let's say, name convention for the Azure Arc. And it's really important, please note, to use the names like this, because it's like SharePoint. SharePoint is P in middle, right? So many people trying to type SharePoint without capital P. So. These name conventions are uh, really important. So one of the important one is Azure Arc Resource Breach. What is the Azure Arc Resource Breach? So you can manage your VMware. I'm talking about vCenter, big data center that you have. Or even Azure Stack HCI. Or you can use uh, VSware System Center VM Manager. So you can use those, uh, you, you can bring those management, those uh, configuration to your uh, Azure environment. Basically, by this connection, by creating this connection, uh, you have this option to manage your disks, you have uh, option to resize your VMs without uh, using uh, actually the vCenter, for example. You can have everything inside Azure, which is really great. The only things that I have to mention, this one is in preview version, maybe some bugs, but it's OK. Uh, basically, I've tested uh, on VMware, and it works like a charm. So if you have a big organization managing by VMware or uh, Stack HCI or even uh, Windows-based uh, hypervisor, so uh, you can easily use this kind of uh, resource breeze architect. So next one, which I really like it, is Azure Arc enabled servers. Azure Arc enabled servers helps you 
to uh, manage your servers. Basically, it doesn't matter if it's uh, a server, a VM on Google or in AWS, or even it's a physical server that you have in your office or in your data center. You can easily use all of Azure options that you have for monitoring, management, uh, governance, protection inside Azure. And it's really great. So one of the things that I love about uh, Azure Arc enabled servers is you can use automation too. So based on that option, imagine that you can really easy push codes from Azure to your on-premise server. And it can be ha uh, possible from Azure Automation or even Logic Apps. So you can see how much is easily to manage your servers and use the automation in your environment, even on-premise environment. Uh, the other part is related how much you can uh, make secure this connection. You can use a private endpoint. You can use VPN for your connections. So you can enjoy with many part of this uh, connection as soon as you uh, onboard your server into the Azure, Azure site. The other part, or the other management part, is about Azure Arc enable Kubernetes. This part is really interesting for developers. So if you have worked with uh, AKS, or Azure Kubernetes uh, Service Cluster, uh, you know how much is really good if you can manage uh, your Kubernetes inside Azure. Microsoft tried to, uh, still actually, trying to uh, make it easy to manage and optimize your Kubernetes cluster in the Azure, uh, in the Azure site. However, if you have uh, on-premise or if you have Kubernetes on the other clouds, how you can manage that? If you have Kubernetes in your on-premise and also if you have Kubernetes in Azure, so it's not really easy to manage because yeah, you have pods in your Kubernetes, you need to uh, keep uh, developing your services. So it's really hard, right, to manage your services. So basically, by Azure Arc Kubernetes, you can onboard your Kubernetes into Azure. And it helps you to have same less experience as you have with AKS, Azure Kubernetes Cluster. So you can connect it to uh, Git services, which is really amazing. And you can use uh, RBAC. The, the things that I forgot to mention, it also works with uh, Azure Arc enabled server. So role-based access, uh, you easily can define this kind of access for your Kubernetes and provide this uh, access to different level of, uh, uh, for example, developers access that you are going to define. So beside that, you can use uh, monitoring and uh, Azure Key Vault to make sure that uh, your clusters are always safe. So you have everything inside Azure by this kind of connection. The other interesting part is Azure Arc data services. So if I want to explain to you how does this part work, Azure Arc Data Services is part of the, uh, part of the other part uh, called Azure Arc uh, SQL Server Enable, uh, sorry, Azure Arc Enabled SQL Server. So you can use this option to onboard your uh, Postgres SQL into the Azure. And also, you can use container registry and use uh, some services like logic apps, like uh, function apps, or even uh, some security options for your uh, data services. And it's include databases. Uh, 
So if you have databases in your environment and you want to have continuous development on your on-premise or multi-cloud databases, you can use this scenario. And it's really great. And uh, one thing that you need to know is you need to have a kind of Kubernetes behind, uh, behind the scene to manage and handle all of your requests inside uh, your SQL databases or Postgres uh, databases. One good thing about this scenario is if you are a fan of ML, machine learning, so you can use machine learning in this scenario and also Azure Arc uh, Kubernetes, uh, enabled Kubernetes. So it's really help you to uh, manage your different scenarios. The other part is Azure Arc enabled SQL Server. Most of companies have uh, SQL databases and maybe in some part of these SQL databases or SQL servers are big and hard to manage, even if we want to think how we want to uh, actually monitor it. And how about the security part? So by this option, you can onboard your SQL server into the Azure, in, in Azure site, and you can apply policies, you can apply like analytics uh, features, Cloud Defender, to your SQL databases. So for those who know how much is really hard to keep assessment on your SQL server or databases, this scenario works amazing. So you can have live assessment on your SQL databases. And one more good things that I have to mention is about licensing. So if you are struggling with licensing part, you can onboard your server to the Azure side. And instead of buying license for your SQL server, you can use uh, license assurement, uh, assurance inside Azure. So easily, you can manage the different side of the SQL uh, databases and licenses by this option. How much we are going to pay if we using Azure Arc? So as you can see, you have a lot of things to do with Azure Arc without paying any uh, dollars, I would say. So attaching servers are free. You can test it easily. If you have a server inside your uh, environment, if you have a computer, if you have a Kubernetes, you can easily onboard and test it. You can use tags. You can use Azure Resource Graph. So if you are really like to use your Azure resources with Graph API, PowerShell, and so on, you can use the same tools for your resources. That's our on-premise site, which is really great. Uh, RBAC, role-based access control, is free. You can onboard your server and manage remote desktop. So if you are IT admin, you know one, one, one of the big problem that you have always is how should I open a kind of port for developers to a specific server. So you can use uh, this option, Azure Arc, to securely open access for a specific server. For Kubernetes, uh, you have uh, a lot of options like tagging, onboarding. Again, it's free. Uh, you can use uh, resource graph. Also, you can use some part of the automation. The extension is free, actually. If you want to install the extension for your Kubernetes or servers, it's free. But if you want to use automation, please note you have to pay some, uh, let's say, pennies for the automation. But if you are keen enough using uh, automation, Azure Automation is free for 500 minutes per month. So it's really good if you want to do some testing. 
Also for data service, it's the same. You can easily uh, onboard your resources, testing, and so on. How about the paid part? How much you have to pay? So Azure Guest Configuration. So what is the Azure Guest Configuration? If you have a server inside your environment, let's say outside of Azure resources, and you want to have auto-manage, patching, and basically having Azure Guest Configuration, you need to pay $6 per server per month. And it's not that much from my perspective because you can make sure everything is always updated and patched. Uh, for Defender, monitoring is the same as the resources that you have in the Azure. So it doesn't matter if you are using Cloud Defender for your server, for your VM inside Azure. Uh, so you can easily do the same for your uh, on-premise environment, which is really great. Uh, for Kubernetes clusters, uh, the first six virtual CPU is free. And uh, I don't know how much you are familiar with uh, AKS, Azure Kubernetes cluster, your service. Uh, it's kind of same. So you have some free options there. But for more CPU or cores, you have to pay more. So here is the same. Six virtual CPU. Uh, virtual CPU is free. And then you have $2 per C virtual CPU per month. For data service, uh, you have a standard edition and enterprise edition. The differences between these two are uh, more or less about the, you can use more vCore and RAM uh, if you want to uh, do some uh, implementation. So by this uh, explanation, you are kind of know, you know, kind of uh, like Neo. Uh, he said, I knew Kung Fu right now, but you are kind of familiar with Azure Arc now. So how we can check, how we can test Azure Arc? We have to have another cloud. We have to have server. You can have, but basically it's, it's a bit tricky because yeah, you need to have server. You need to somehow onboard or test this environment. So what is the best solution here? I want to introduce you Jumpstart. And big shout out to Lior Kamarat and his team. They have created everything for you here. So if you want to test Azure Arc in different scenarios, you have this option, and it's really great. I cannot say how much is important to test it. Because instead of spending a lot of time to create the resources, having on-premise environment or on the other clouds, you can easily use templates or BICEP or uh, Azure template to deploy entire scenario inside your environment. And it's really great. And you do not need to have uh, another cloud or on-premise resources. You can completely use Azure Arc. So this is the uh, core design principle. And it's continuing, it continues developing. They are working a lot in different scenarios, different, uh, basically, uh, solutions. So there are four sides right now. Agora, ArcBox, Jumpstart Scenarios, and HCI Box. Today, I'm going to talk about more about uh, ArcBox, because it's easy to uh, kind of implement and start with Azure Arc. And it's really great. So for Azure Arc Box, you have different flavors. You can implement a full edition, which is included uh, Kubernetes clusters, uh, Arc-enabled data services, SQL databases, SQL servers, assessments, everything that you need to test. 
However, if you cannot use this one, you can use the other one, like DevOps edition, that you can use even Grafana in your scenario. Also, uh, I'm going to explain this one, IT Pros edition, because it's the simplest one, and you can, in like uh, half an hour, 45 minutes, I would say, uh, implement all of this scenario. And also, if you want, you can use this DevOps uh, edition too. Sorry, that one is, uh, is data operation edition. This one is uh, DevOps operation, uh, DevOps edition. So that's really great. If you want to start with Azure Arc, this is the best way to do that. Uh, what I want to show you basically is the Azure Arc uh, Jumpstart page. So you can navigate to the site. You have different scenarios here. As you can see, you can easily select one of these scenarios. Or you can uh, go to ArcBox, which is we are going to do right now, but not the implementation part. I don't want to spend 45 minutes here but you can do it by yourself, it's really easy. So let's go for ArcBox for IT Pros. I just want to show you every single steps. You can find it here. Simple. If you are not, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, thank you to mention that. So it's open source, so just contact them and enjoy. They are a really good team. So uh, as you can see, you have some steps and also prerequisites. Uh, you just need to uh, make sure, for example, in this case, uh, the, the, the requirement that you need for environment, for your environment, for your implementation, and uh, some uh, provider registering that you need to do. And after that, you can't start implementing. You need to create a service principle app and then some SSH key. You can easily deploy from easy deploy connections here. Or even if you're a fan of uh, like uh, GitHub, you just need to uh, clone and use an Azure template, ARM template, or even the Bicep one. Uh, I actually use Bicep. So as you can see, uh, let me show you here how many, 18 minutes. So with 18 minutes, you can have entire scenario that you want to test in Azure Arc. So let's go to the Azure, to the Azure <coughs> Arc solutions. Here I have machines that I onboarded into Azure Arc. So as you can see, the color is a bit different. Yeah, blue, but it's here, it's purple. So it's the sign of the Azure Arc. When you onboard the servers in this scenario, you have some information here, plus some options here. For example, I can connect to the server, on-premise server. Please note, it's on-premise server and I can use SSH to connect, or even admin center, you just need to install the extension. So what we will get with admin center here, it's so useful. So inside admin center, you have everything that you need. You can use this uh, metrics, or manage your certificates, file and sharing on server, firewall. You can manage the networks, even you can push PowerShell codes if you want. And uh, you can use remote desktop. Let's do a remote desktop here. Why not? This is a local server. Arc uh, demo, I guess. I'm not sure. Or no. Administrate. 
administrator Okay, I guess I forgot the password. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I don't. Yeah. Because you have all of passwords here. It's defined before. You just need to check it. So yeah, the remote desktop, easily. Can you use RBAC, role-based access? Yes, why not? Can we use a bastion? Yes, bastion for your on-premise environment. For those uh, who don't know about the bastion, so it's a kind of remote desktop and also uh, succession uh, to your uh, resources like Linux, uh, Windows OS. So we can use a uh, browser instead of direct remote connection. And it's pretty secure instead of direct connection to the server. So you have everything here for the server. So let's back to show you SQL Server instance. I onboarded my SQL Server too, so why not? Here. I have several options here. I can see the version of the SQL Server that I have here. Also, I have best practice assessment. You can use Microsoft best practice. I don't know what happened here, but you can start a new one, the new assessment here. So if you go to patching, I can uh, use automate patching on Azure on my SQL Server. So there is no problem with having your SQL servers, even server or uh, actual SQL Server uh, to be updated. Uh, also, Microsoft Defender for Cloud. I just need to show you this option too. So, one good about Azure Arc Jump Start is they put a kind of brute attack in your SQL Server. So, you can see what will be happen if Cloud Defender wants to work. So you can see what happened. For example, it's a pre-attack. I can see some information here. And I can use a different action. Or, for example, this one, unusual payload. So it's a good practice when you want to start with Azure Arc. Uh, if you are a bit uh, worried about uh, costs, I'm pretty sure they added it somewhere in their documentation that you can see how much you are going to pay, but you can find in in their uh, website. Uh, I don't have Kubernetes cluster here. As I mentioned, I just onboarded uh, Azure Arc jump start for IT pros to show you how much you can use this option. But if I navigate a bit down, so here, application services. So as you can see, inside Azure Arc, you're able to use API management, app services, even event grid, functions, and logic apps. And it's really great. All of them are preview because, yeah, continues developing, but it's really great. And you can use these features to do what, what you want to do. So one thing that I just need to mention here, if I go to Azure Automation, I just want to create a test Let me just create so if you want to create some automation connected to your server if you are a fan of powershell or python 
you can use, use Azure Automation connected to your server in on-premise site. If I want to give you an idea, imagine that you have a server that you need to do some automation on that. So if I go to hybrid groups, let's say test here again, add machines, I have the machines here, right? So just <coughs> click, add, view, create, done. So by this agent, we easily can push the codes from Azure to uh, our on-premise environment or the other clouds. So you, ha you are able to do many things, and it's really great. So that's the important part that you need to know. Uh, inside Azure Arc, uh, you have something like ca called custom location. So you can define different data centers by this custom location. You can use it when you have different resources, and it's really useful. Uh, based on that, you can create different queries, tags, and so on. So please test this one too. Also, you have private link scopes for your environment to make it more secure if you don't want to uh, publicly onboard your server. But if I want to show you, this is the way that you can onboard a single server, multi-server, or based on the ad, uh, update management. So if I go here, generate the script, I just need to define some information here. Let's say North Europe. Yes, Windows, and what type of connection I'm going to uh, use for connectivity, endpoint, uh, public endpoint, private, or proxy, and uh, then download and run this script. And this is the script. You just need to open your uh, PowerShell on your server and just run this script. So there is another solution that if you don't want to use direct connection to your Azure environment, uh, you can easily uh, use the disconnected method. So you have another server to manage those connections between your environment and your Azure site. So not here. So that was the story about Azure Arc kind of connected to metrics. So hope you can get out from your metrics and uh, fight with your struggles or problems with uh, hybrid environment by Azure Arc. So please let me know if you have any questions. I have a comment. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you figure, okay, if I don't want to migrate from it, I don't want to do the whole project, what can I do? Use Azure Arc. Get extended security updates. Yes. Uh, so that's one option. Yeah, exactly. And if you want to use a uh, role based access, or let, let's say Active Directory authentication on your SQL Server, you should use uh, SQL Server 2022. That option is available on that version. So thank you so much for the comment. It was really good. <laughs> yeah, I can say it's, it's a high topic for most of our customers at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Azure Arc to the rescue. Yeah. Uh, there's some licensing that you maybe you want to read on the fine print. That's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have other sessions that you've done on, you have them online. Yes. You've done it at different communities online, right? Yeah, so uh, I contributed with uh, Global Azure in Prague and Paris. 
so you can find those recorded uh, sessions. Also, Azure Student Groups, plus Azure uh, Back to Schools. So, uh, what was the topic? It's not the and uh, this is the second time that I'm uh, de uh, delivering this session about Azure Arc. But the last one was related to automation and integration on Azure. So you can kind of realize how you can use automation integration based on services that you have in Azure. And uh, yeah, so next year, another contribution with Azure Enthusiasm. And uh, maybe in Turin next month, we will see. <laughs> You have tried. Amazing. So, as I told you, the en enterprise security update scenario that also on Azure Jumpstart. So there is a scenario where you can try it. Want to think? Okay, how do I do with my service? So the Jumpstart there is actually using the nested virtualizations. So everything is done in Azure. So and you get like it would be in my own. It's amazing. Crazy. Yeah. Yes, perfect. Uh, I guess uh, that's it then. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you.